So I came to West Jordan today, which is the west end of the Salt Lake Valley, to come see Utah's natural meat. It's probably the most innovative farm in all of Utah because he uses 95% less water than regular farms, and he just opened probably the first dairy in about 30 years in Salt Lake County. A king is a Percheron and Duke is a Belgian horse. So did all farms used to have horses like these? If you go back far enough they did, yes. Horses or mules or both or oxen. Do you figure you save any money by using horses instead? Oh, That's... I don't know that we save any money by using horses necessarily. It's just, I guess, a little more. We don't have to maintain engines. We don't have to buy fuel. They, of course, eat, so that's an expense. Mm -hmm. Shoe them myself. Is it all of the goat feed? Or do you have to supplement a little more? No, we're not supplementing the goats with anything else, just the sprouts. Oh, wow. Yeah, and any weeds, you know. They... We're gonna go around and right up the alleyway, feed the cows. Yeah, I can see why you use the horses. This is just so much nicer than listening to an engine. And... Yeah, this isn't the half of it either. If you get into a, a huge field like this where you're disking all day long, a tractor, it just, I don't know. It's, it's like being stuck in a cubicle. Yeah, just, just controlling the machine. Even machines nowadays have GPS on them, so they they go where they are designed to go and plant exactly where they're designed to plant. Yeah, they look like they love it. It'll all be gone in about 20 minutes. The laws surrounding dairy are based around large dairy production agriculture, and I think that the dairy industry has been so concerned because they've had several pretty bad black eyes over health issues with milk in the past, especially in the 20s, that they, um, they're they just crazy fanatical about what they will and won't allow or what they do and don't want to see. So if anybody got sick from milk, even if it was just drinking it from their neighbor's cow, then I think they feel like that would hurt their sales in the grocery store. 
because people would say, oh, milk's not good for you or milk can make you sick. Uh, even, even when it's wholly out of context. So we've seen a lot of rules like that. For example, we can sell raw milk, but we can't sell raw cream and we can't sell raw butter. Now you explain that to me. And there's only one explanation I can come up with, and that is that they don't want anybody in their market share. Yeah. They've got butter handled. They don't need any help, and they certainly don't want it. So that's Could you make at. cheese here? We don't make cheese. Not yet. You, no. you will? You could, though? I hope so. I hope we get to that point. Cool. Yeah. Raw cheese has to be aged 60 days before you can sell it. Oh, it doesn't? Yeah. together at. We didn't want to do the typical nine to five where, you know, we're both gone for most of the day and then come home and we're so tired that we just go to bed and kind of rinse and repeat. And one of our end goals was to have a homestead. And so we were kind of looking around and we found Shane's farm and we gave him a call and just asked him if he needed any help. And since he's a family farm, he said he doesn't typically hire like that but he just so happened to need somebody to help with his dairy and that worked out really great for us because we could both do it and kind of line everything else that we needed to on the farm, so. You get to do something kind of different every day. I mean, some of it's always the same, but we're always learning something new. We butcher his chickens with them, and you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot more manual labor than, uh, I don't know, you think it would be a kind of a fun thing where you get to work with animals all day, but you're also fixing fences and changing tires and, you know, always fixing something that'll break or go wrong, trying to do whatever you can. But. Mm -hmm. It's enjoyable. Enjoy. But you didn't get, you weren't raised on a farm? Or? No, yeah. We, I had no prior experience. Ross used to work, well, when he was little, what did you do? The FFA? Oh, yeah. yeah, Future Farmers of America. Yeah, but uh, that's... In high school. <laughs> that's about it. But I'd never really milked a cow So coming here. Mm -hmm. Wow. We, we save about 95% of the water we would have to use to irrigate pastures with the same amount of animals. So we're using 5% of the water. Yeah, so we just pulled the fodder out and washed the trays and then we'll push these down and put new seed in. So every day we harvest and every day we seed. So that we have the same amount of available feed every day. We can see some on there. And then the second day they're sprouted a little bit, and the third day you start to see. It's just PVC pipes down every row, huh? That's Mr. That's the sprinkler system, yep. That's cool. Is this just all wheat? This is barley, wheat, and oats mixed together. And uh, usually we do sunflower, but I ran out. You know about how much weight these gain by the time they're to the end of the row? Yeah, 20, they weigh about 20 pounds. So I put in two and a half pounds of seed and get 20 pounds of feed. Wow. On the other side. So they, they gain 10% or 10 times their weight. Right. That's amazing. And went and visited this guy in California and saw their facility where they were building them at and then we ended up getting our first one from them and so when you compare the cost of doing this to if you were cultivating a field and growing and harvesting are you actually saving money 
or is it about the same? No, you know? it's about the same. It depends on a lot of factors. So it depends on, like for example, somebody who has a lot of available land and water. Um, that could be far cheaper. Or somebody has a lot of grazing land. Mm -hmm. um, it's very inexpensive. So it just depends on what you compare it to. It's cheaper than buying hay, and it's better for them than buying hay. It saves an awful lot of water. Um, and, you're, and you're not transporting that massive amount of hay. Right. So. So if you were if you were if you were growing this much feed in a field, how much more water would you have to use? 